six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. We're out today with a Lamb Pride rotary cutter. We're gonna do a quick walk around on this piece here and show you some of the features and quality points that you might wanna look at if you're considering buying a rotary cutter. So whether you call this a brush hog, a slasher, a rotary cutter, or just a mower, uh, regardless of what you want to call it, uh, you're looking for the same kinds of features on every one of these things. Uh, majorly, uh, typically quality oriented features is what we're usually looking for. So this is an implement that really takes a lot of abuse. When you go out and you run a mower like this, you're going to drag it across rocks. You're going to get it caught on top of stumps. You're going to do all kinds of stuff to it. Um, and so what we're going to look for when we're going around a mower like this is a really rugged construction. Uh, if you look at the edges of the mower here where you go around the side, you'll see this Lamb Pride mower. Um, this is a model 1872 that I'm going over here today. Uh, the edges of this are curved here at the top as opposed to being a welded seam. Uh, a bent piece of metal like this is going to hold up a lot better than a welded seam would. You say you take a rock for instance as you're driving along that rock hits the end gate back here. That welded seam is going to break a lot easier than a curved does and so typically your heavier duty mowers your better quality stuff is going to be curved there across the top you're going to look at two at your chassis so there's a box truss on this that holds this together uh, and this kind of provides your support structure so you're looking for a good heavy support structure um, and not uh, simply flat pieces of steel as you continue across here and looking at those weldments, uh, a lot of the mid-range and higher-end mowers are starting to have flat decks. A lot of people store these things outside because it's a really big piece to keep in any kind of shed or barn. Um, and for that reason, water tends to collect on top of them where these joints are. Now, if you look here really closely at Lamb Pride's mower, they actually leave small holes in these corners so water can drain out. That's one of the more th thoughtful things that they've done. Uh, but you'll notice some really inexpensive mowers, they don't take the care to to do those kinds of things and if you store it outside you'll get rusting and stuff in these corner pockets um, but you can go for the really high-end stuff you'll see full flat decks where they've taken the uh, the bracing and the trussing here and sandwiched it inside of two layers of metal to prevent those water pockets from forming Another place that you can look for steel in a mower deck is in the skid shoes. So these things tend to get drug across the ground a lot. And so there's a shoe, a flat area that's done up here on the front corners of the mower. Uh, if you look into heavier steel and heavier iron in your mower deck, this is another place that you can look is in the gauge and the build of those shoes. As since they're being drug across the ground, they do tend to take some wear and damage. There is no way of getting around it, but quality driveline components do come with a cost. When you cheapen your mower, you're typically cheapening your driveline components pretty significantly, uh, particularly in terms of the gearbox. So major companies like Lamp Pride are going to source their own gearboxes. Lamp Pride even casts their name into the side of it. Uh, for the most people, implements like this are long-term purchases, and so parts support should be a concern. A lot of your really economy-oriented mowers are typically going to use gearboxes from overseas and not from necessarily from manufacturers that you're going to be able to go back to 30 years from now to find a part for. So uh, when you see particularly a company putting their name on the side of it, that typically means you're buying a little bit better quality piece that they're going to stand behind a little bit better because, you know, their reputation rides on that. As you go up in the higher horsepower models, you usually get longer warranties as well. So uh, this gearbox is going to have a five-year warranty on it. You do want to watch some of those warranties. There are exclusions on exactly what kinds of damage they will pay for, but by and large, larger, longer warranties tend to signify a better gearbox. As we continue forward towards the tractor, uh, this mower here that I'm using has a slip clutch in it. If you look inside underneath the shielding back here, you'll see two plates with some springs and nuts on them in order to do the adjustment on those slip clutches. Uh, slip clutches on these are really important. If you're going to cheap on your mower a little bit, sometimes you'll see shear pins on these drive lines. And on a mower, that's something I really would discourage. Again, we talk about the application for this thing, right? You're going to take this mower, you're going to drag it over rocks, you're going to drag it over stumps. Those blades are going to hit all kinds of things and it's really easy to knock the shear pins out of these things over and over and over again forcing you have to stop get tools out you know fish the shear pins out of your toolbox not a fun thing to do over and over again so a slip clutch can add 150 200 to the cost of a mower but in my opinion over the lifetime of these things and for a good quality implement it's money well spent 
There can be a surprising amount of options on a rotary cutter. You wouldn't think there's that much you can option out on a mower, but in fact you can. Uh, this back plate right here, right now we have a solid back plate on this mower. This can often be swapped out for chain shielding. Chain shielding would give you about three or four inch lengths of chain that are going to go across the back of the mower. That's there for safety to catch rocks from flying out the back, but it does provide another significant purpose. Uh, that chain shielding will actually help disperse the clippings that are coming out the back of this mower and prevent wind rowing. If you go out and you mow a pasture grass with a mower like this, you'll see circular patterns coming out the back or grass tending to lay on one side of the mower. It's not a finished mower, right? It's not going to give you that finished kind of look, but with a uh, chain shielding across the back, it can actually let the deck breathe a little bit more and let those clippings disperse a little bit better. So not necessarily just something you want to buy for safety. Chain shielding can actually help your finished cut look a little bit better. Small rotary cutters like this are typically going to come with one standard tail wheel. This one here is laminated pieces of rubber creating a solid tail wheel that you don't need to worry about puncturing or punching off a rim or anything like that. As you get into larger multi-spindle cutters, sometimes you'll start to see options offered back here where you can get some pneumatic tires or used airplane tires uh, or different options for your real tail wheels. Each one really does kind of have a different purpose depending on your application, so it's something you should ask your salesperson about if there's availability. Uh, typically, we like to sell used airplane tires uh, on the big multi-spindle cutters. They're very, very thick rubber, lots of plies so that they can take thorns and stuff without puncturing. But that air spring that's in the tire does help it cushion it a little bit more so that the whole system rides a little bit better and doesn't jar around quite so much, which should prolong the life of your equipment. We see more and more customers all the time opting to buy quick hitches with their tractors. Now that quick hitch is an adapter that goes onto your three-point hitch that allows you to back up into an implement and lift up and catch it and pick it up without having to pound three-point hitch arms onto the implements. Uh, it's often an unpleasant thing to do. One thing that you want to watch when you're buying a mower like this, a lot of them now are being identified that they have quick hitch compatibility. That's not a clear set standard among all implement manufacturers, but several companies now are trying to stick much more strictly to that standard. So if you look at some cheap imports and that kind of thing, you find that those companies aren't nearly as good about following the quick hitch dimensions, that SAE standard that's laid out. Uh, but this Land Pride piece right here, they even identify theirs by putting stickers on it telling you that this piece is going to be compatible with that hitch. This cast piece right here is called a floating top link. What it allows is if you're driving along and the back end of the mower is pushed up or your tractor goes down into a swale, it allows this part of the mower right here to flex so that your, your whole long, you know, basically 30 foot long front to back rig here can go through some undulations and stuff in the ground. You'll notice on some less expensive, lesser mowers, uh, this piece isn't always here. You'll get these arms pinned directly up here to the top link of the three point. Uh, so having that flex link in there makes the mower and tractor contour the ground a lot better. If you ever go to change the blades on a rotary cutter, you'll find that it's not typically a fun job, right? Because these are really large, heavy blades and they're in the, the dirt and the muck, the nuts and bolts that are put on them tend to get uh, really covered in dirt and worn and hard to remove. Uh, a lot of companies now, like Land Pride, have gone and they've come up with better ways to do that. So you'll see this rubber plug here can come out so that you can rotate the bottom to be able to find the nut and get a good socket on it from the top. Um, you can also have pin and clip systems so you don't have to worry about the threading and stuff that's on those bolts making the blades hard to remove. So a lot of uh, improvements that can be made even there to that easy process of being able to change your blades. Never thought I'd be able to say so much about a rotary cutter. You know, the thing seems awfully simple. It's just something to go cut stuff down. Uh, but there's actually a lot of technology and thought and features that are put into these mowers. So hopefully those are a couple of things that you can do some looking at when shopping to try to make sure you're picking a good implement for your good quality tractor. So if you're shopping for a piece of equipment, you have any implement needs, give us a call at Messix, 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com.